What's up everyone? Welcome back to another review and this time we're taking a look at Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. The second installment into Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Let's waste no time. Let's get right into it. The overall story of the movie is as follows. Jack Sparrow teams up with Will Turner and Elizabeth as he now has to fend off the dreaded Davy Jones, a man that he owes a debt to. And because of that, he is now marked for death and is, on, and is being hunted by the Kraken. A mysterious sea creature. All the while, the wedding of Will and Liz is interrupted by a new villain, Lord Cutler, whose sole purpose is to seize control of Davy Jones' heart and the Flying Dutchman, so that way he can eliminate all the pirates, <clears throat> all the pirates that rule the Seven Seas. So yeah, that is the overall story of Dead Man's Chest. Let's see if we can go over this movie as quick as possible. <sighs> Okay, so to me, Dead Man's Chest is not as good as the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. The first Pirates movie was a simple yet fun movie that told a story that was easy to follow. The second movie tries to do way too many things. Like, you can tell that Dead Man's Chest is a movie that is trying to cram so much into what that is trying that is trying to cram so much, it feels directionless at times. Like, there are moments, there are a lot of scenes in this movie that drag on forever because they don't know what direction they want to take. Majority of this movie is, is just these characters going from location to location to try and find the chest, and that's basically it. Like, there's, there's not really a whole lot of, uh, <clears throat> for a movie with very little plot, it goes on way too long. And a lot of the length goes to scenes just being extended for longer than they should, and just scenes that are basically just filler. Like, there's literally 20 minutes of screen time wasted to Jack on an island being chased by cannibals and, and the Black Pearl trying to rescue him. It serves absolutely no purpose to the story. It goes on for 20 minutes too long. And if you eliminate that entire section of the movie, I think Dead Man's Chest would have had a much, would have had a much more considerably breezy run, uh, running time. <clears throat> That's this movie's problem. It, a, a lot of scenes are extended longer than they should. And it just drags the whole pacing down. And a lot of scenes stop to a crawl. So that way these overly long action sequences can can take place. Now, the first pirate movie did a, did a good job at blending the action sequences with the story that it was trying to tell. Where the action was pushing the story. Not the story stopping so that an action sequence could take place. Uh, Dead Man's Chest is the exact opposite of The Black Pearl. The action sequences come first. And whatever story that is here has to stop so that way the actions can so that way these scenes can play out because this movie knows that it doesn't have much of a story to tell <clears throat> this movie tries to have several different plot points going on going on at the same time while all the while all these characters just feel directionless and these sub and there are subplots that are just like being set up like you can tell this movie was written to set up a third movie like this feels like a filler movie hence why every single character feels like they're just doing stuff to push the to, to push the plot along because the real stuff's going to come and is going to come later <clears throat> uh if you want to compare it you can compare this to the star wars to the og star wars trilogy however in the og star wars trilogy the empire strikes back with empire strikes back was telling a compelling story and it had a compelling ending Dead Man's Chest has the exact opposite. It's not telling a compelling story. It's not. T it doesn't have a compelling ending. It has a cliffhanger ending that is actually that is that in, the, in which the last two minutes is actually really cool, but that's about it. Getting up to that two minutes is just a slog. Like this movie is a slog to sit through because I again, the action sequences, even though they're very thrilling, they can get tedious and boring for how long they go on. Uh, for example, <clears throat> there's this one scene where Jack, Will, and Norrington are fighting on this, like, on this uh, big wheel, and it goes on for an eternity. Like, it literally goes on for an eternity, and it literally turns into a slap, to a slapstick joke, which is what it, it, it is. Now, Will and Norrington are fighting to the death, are fighting to the death while Jack is trying to get this key to, JV Don to Davy Jones' locker. Like, the stuff that Jack is doing is pure slapstick while Will and Norrington are fighting to the death. <clears throat> You know, it feels very just, ugh, it feels bloated. It just feels boring and convoluted. <clears throat> well, yeah, like, my biggest complaint with this movie is that the story is not good. Like, if this movie was just a, if this movie had the same runtime or maybe 20 minutes shorter than the first, then I think, then I think you would, then I think 
it would have been better served because this movie does have some good stuff in it. And I'm not saying it doesn't. It does. It has some good stuff that I really, really like. <clears throat> uh, for example, one of the things that I really like is Will finally meeting up his dad, Bootstrap Turner, uh, Bootstrap, Bootstrap, played by Stellan Skarsgård. I like this. I like the scenes with uh, Orlando Bloom and Stellan Skarsgård. I like the whole idea of Will finally seeing his dad. <clears throat> I think they share really good scenes together. And I like how Davy Jones, played by Bill Nye, is very ruthless captain and kind of forces his and kind of forces Bootstrap to whip his own son, much to the dissatisfaction of Bootstrap doing so. Like this is some good stuff here. I like it. <clears throat> it's some good story stuff. It's good. Uh I also like how St I also like the I also I also like the return of Norrington. By, played by Jack Davenport. Norrington was one of my favorite characters from that first movie. He didn't come across as a villain. He came across as a man with a strong sense of honor and a strong code of honor. But in this movie, we see him down in the dumps. We see him just stripped of his pride, stripped of everything. Uh, so basically, uh, in between the events of Black Pearl in this movie, he and his company tried to track down the Black Pearl, but they got caught in a hurricane with Norrington losing everything. So now he reluctantly joins Jack Sparrow and his crew in order to regain some semblance of his honor. <clears throat> now, of course, when you get towards the end of the movie, he double crosses Jack, steals the heart of Davy Jones, and give it to this and gives it to Lord Cutler, setting up their story for the third movie. <clears throat> but that's just what this movie is. This whole movie is just set up for a third movie. It doesn't feel self-contained, in which it sets up pieces for a third movie. It feels like this entire movie just feels like it just needs to bridge everything so that way the third movie can pay off everything. It doesn't tell a self-contained story, which is what this movie's biggest problem is. This movie's biggest problem is that it's, is that it's not self-contained with elements that could be explored. <clears throat> but with that being said, I do like the characters in this movie. You know, uh, uh, Kevin McNeely once again returns as Gib, who is Jack Sparrow's first mate. And once again, the character of Gib is one of my standouts. I just love the chemistry of Gibb and Jack Sparrow. They work so well with one another. Depp and McNeely have very, very underrated on-screen chemistry with each other because since that first movie to this movie, I like these two. If I could see a whole movie of Gibb and Captain Jack Sparrow, I would not be disappointed because I just love... Like, the character of Gibb is so loyal to Jack, it's fantastic. And and, and Sparrow to, uh, to Gibb as well. Good stuff. They got good, understated com comedic, comedic timing together. Can't complain. Uh, my also my two favorite characters from that first movie, uh, uh, the characters of uh, Pencil and uh, Rigetti, they also return in this movie. Uh, <clears throat> they have some decent moments, but they have this one horrible moment where they literally recount why Jack, Norrington, and Will are fighting, and it just—it's like okay, so the audience didn't get this. We understand they're still fighting with a beach over chest, but you wasted two minutes of these two just recounting everything, and it just felt so awkward and so weird. But other than that, I like the whole idea of uh, Rigetti reading the Bible, as <laughs> because if he learns, because if he reads the Bible, then that can like uh, <clears throat> then it counts as uh, him having penance or something like that. So like they got some decent moments here and there. I like him, uh, Bill Nye as Davy Jones. I like Bill Nye as the character of Davy Jones. I like how intimidating Davy Jones look. Davy Jones is, and I like the overall look of Davy Jones having like this squid face. But it has it, but it's not done in a way where it's goofy. It's done in a way where it looks intimidating. Actually, to be honest with you, all the crew members of the of the Flying Dutchman have these unique, grotesque sea creature-like looks to them, and they come across as a legitimate threat. And the Flying Dutchman, the ship itself, comes across as a legitimate powerhouse that completely eradicated the Black Pearl in the third act after the <clears throat> along with the Kraken. So yeah. In terms of the villain, I think Davy Jones is a good as a good next villain after Barbosa, and the Flying Dutchman comes across as, as a legitimate threat. <clears throat> mm, so that's good stuff. Uh, Lord Cutler, the character by Tom Hollander. Listen, Lord Cutler is just come it just comes across as <laughs> Lord Cutler comes across as a one dimensional villain. He just wants this thing so that way he can accomplish his goal of eliminating a threat that he does not like. That's Lord Cutler. There's nothing really all that complex about him. Davy Jones is the more complex villain, and we're told his story through this character known as uh, T.L. Delma, played by uh, Naomi Harris, in which she explains that uh, Davy Jones was once once was in love, and then that love kind of faded away. 
hence why Davy Jones cut out his own heart and put it inside the chest as a way to kind of like forget about it in a sense. <clears throat> so yeah, Davy Jones as a character is more complex than, um, for lack of a better, for lack of a better phrase, than uh, Lord Cutler. Because at least Davy Jones, you know, he 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 was once a good man, so to speak, or let's say a man who found love, but then that love was taken away from him, and now he has nothing left but his piracy, so to speak. So yeah, you know, I like it. I like Davy Jones' story. The character of Tia Delmar, you know, played by Naomi Harris, I like her. No, she gave that she gave that nice, that very just theatrical kooky craziness, the same way that Jack Sparrow the same way that Johnny Depp gives it gives Jack Sparrow. <clears throat> so yeah, no complaints. Uh speaking of Jack Sparrow, I'll say this. In the first movie, Jack Sparrow was very entertaining and Johnny Depp was the highlight. In this movie, this movie capitalized on Jack Sparrow's popularity, much to this film's detriment. Even though Johnny Depp is just as good as he was in that in the first movie, I think when you overexpose the character of Jack Sparrow, he loses that he loses that whimsical touch that that, that the character does possess. And to me, that's what happens in this movie. It's almost as if this movie is forcing Jack into situations just so that he can be the focal point of it. And everyone else around him so, kind of sort of suffers. Like, to me, Will and Elizabeth still have good... Uh, Bloom and Knightley still have good chemistry with one another. But they're, I still don't really care for their for their romantic feelings for each other. <clears throat> Especially since Will has finally met his father. I'm more interested to see where that story goes than I am with Will and Elizabeth tying the knot. To be honest with you, this movie should have just started with Will and Elizabeth already married and being on the run from the and being on the run from from uh from Lord Cutler because he finds because he sees treason in them helping Jack Sparrow and being associated with Jack Sparrow. I think that would have been better instead of the, instead of this whole thing of these two trying to get married, then that wedding having to be stopped. I think if you already start I think if this movie would have been started with these two already married, I wouldn't have been so <clears throat> I wouldn't have been so bored. <clears throat> but like I said, you do got some good moments with these characters here and there. Jack Sparrow, he does have good moments himself as well, though I think he, though I think he's way too overexposed in this movie and overshadows everyone, <clears throat> and that's something that, <clears throat> and that's something that can be both a good thing and a bad thing all at the same time. <clears throat> but I'll say this: the one thing I do like about this movie is that I do like how it takes a playbook out of The Empire Strikes Back, in which we, in which the movie kind of sort of implies that the Kraken did kill Jack Sparrow after it completely eviscerated the Black Pearl. And I do like the ending. <clears throat> I do like the ending of uh, Tia De of uh, Tia of Delmar resurrecting Captain Barbosa so that way the uh, so that way the crew can take their last stand against Davy Jones. So seeing the return of Jeffrey Rush as Barbosa is a plus. And like I said, the last two minutes where he comes on screaming for the credits, I like it. I love it a lot. <clears throat> and I <clears throat> And I really want to see where this goes in the third movie. And now I'm saying this because I've never seen a, the parts of the Caribbean movies, except for the first. So seeing the second one, seeing the third is going to be a whole new experience for me. So I really don't have any idea where the story is going to go in the third movie. <clears throat> <sighs> but with all that being said, Dead Man's Chest by itself, listen, it's a flawed movie. It's an imperfect movie. It does have some bright spots here and there, but it's bogged down by sluggish pacing, overly long action sequences, and stretches out a story that doesn't really need to be close to three hours long, to be honest with you. So yeah, with all that being said, to me, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest is going to get a solid 5 out of 10. <clears throat> so yeah, 5 out of 10 for Dead Man's Chest. Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.